You should be in bed. Come here, Marion. I'll pull your hair. Stepa, stop it, Stepa. I'm off now, Mama. Don't be too late, Julia. Oh, don't worry. Bye, Papa. Ah, dearly. Where are you off to, then? I've got a date. Ah. <laughs> Here, Stefan. He's impossible. Why can't you come when I call you? Five o'clock. Might as well knock off. There's nothing cooking here. Except me. Luca! Quick! Get a picture. All right, boys, that's the mayor. There's plenty to go around. Uh, Luca, who's your prisoner? The Crown Prince of Russia. You're taking to Magrave? You tell me. What's up? The uniform man. Alphonse from Montmartre. From Montmartre? With an offering from Maigre. It could be. The Montmartre killer. What did you get? A good shot of his eye. Ah. Five women murdered in a row. It had better be him. So you got your madman, Sergeant. Very good, what madman? Jack the Montmartre Ripper. Come on, Torrance. Who made the arrest? Now, who says anyone's been arrested, eh? Oh, thanks to the corporation. Time for the late edition. Too late. He's gone to phone it in. This place will be buzzing in ten minutes. We might run a special with this picture. We'll wait. Oh, midnight. There's one. Yeah. Oh. Oh. All right, let's get it. Come on. 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 Let's get it. Beer and sandwiches. Looks like an all-night yeah. oh. It's sweaty long enough. <coughs> so we. Here we go. Oh, Come on, Megrim, what is it? Now, you boys know that I always give you as much as I can, as <laughs> soon as I can. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all I can tell you just now is that there's a man in there and he's helping the police. Is that oh. all, Inspector? I'll give you a fullest statement as soon as I can. Any chance for the next 20 minutes? Before the morning edition. Can't promise anything. Can we have his name? Now, he may be innocent. You wouldn't want to see him lynched. Does he come from Montmartre? We picked him up there. Did Sergeant Luca make the arrest? No one's been arrested. He's helping the police. Can we say he's a Montmartre killer? <laughs> I'll have to use your discretion. Good enough for me. I've passed 12. I think 
we've done it. I wouldn't count on it. Well, there's nothing else I can count on. Now, I want Inspectors Gadinouche, uh, Vierge, and Lemoine, and Madame Dauphin here at... Uh, what time do the morning editions come off the press? Four o'clock. Make it 4.15. Begin telephoning now, Luca. And they're not to come in police cars. Right. The Montmartre killer. Question mark. So that's what you've been up to. Then this means you've got the murderer. If it means that to you, that's good. Now we can start. <clears throat> because tonight, we're going to get him. The real killer. Then who's this in the photograph? A decoy to fool the press. I'm trying to set a trap to catch him. And this is the bait kindly provided by our friends of the press. Now, the murders have all been in this sector of Montmartre. There's uh, Rue de Revet, the Rue uh, Saint Rustique, the Rue Le Pic, and two alleyways here lying to the northeast of Sacre Coeur. Now, he's got away every time because he knows every twist, every alley, every wall that can be climbed. So we know he lives or has lived in Montmartre. That's all we know. I mean, five months. I must bring him out in the open. With this? With that. How do you think this will work? Vanity. I believe that we're looking for a megalomaniac. Five women killed in five months. Now, in a few hours, he'll read in his newspaper that the brave, magnificent murderer has been caught. And he'll see this picture. And his vanity won't stand it. So he'll confess? No. I think it's far more likely that he'll go out again with a knife. But surely. Now, that is the risk I'm taking. I'm counting that he will go out tonight. And that means that we all have a lot to organise the next few hours. Now, Madame Dauphois, you'll be in charge of the women's section, and yours will be the worst job. I want you to find me at least 20 volunteers who will go out into the streets here at intervals, the dark streets, alone, between 9.30 and midnight. Oh, yes. All the information about times and names of streets is there. Now, the women should wear normal summer clothes, and they must all be experts in judo. The dangers will be very great. I know. We'll do all we can to reduce them. I'm sure you'll get your volunteers, Chief Inspector. You, I'll be in touch. Good morning, gentlemen. Good, Good morning. morning. Now, gentlemen, you've all seen the map. You'll each be responsible for one sector of it. I want to seal off the whole area. This creature must be caught. But Montmartre is not our district. Exactly. I wanted men whose faces are unknown in Montmartre. Well, as you're from the outer districts, I want also four inspectors from each of you. Well, that's going to leave me very short, mm. but you shall have them. Good. Now, they're to start moving in this morning. Uh, they're to be tourists with cameras, suitcases, a few with wives. Hotel rooms have been booked in and around the area, and all windows face the street. Now, from dusk on, your men are to be on the streets or at the windows. Everyone in their final positions by 8.30 ready to move the moment the killer strikes. It seems a pretty desperate plan. It is, and it's got to work. Full instructions are in here with detailed maps of the sectors you're each responsible for. Now, contact will be by radio from the positions marked. Operation Montmartre. It's 10 to 5 now. Start moving in, in your men in the morning. And everyone in the final positions at 8.30. Right? Right. Very good. Good morning, Inspector. Good morning. Well, that's it. The whole area sealed off. People dotted through it like flies. Yeah, where's the ambulance? It's right there, Patron. Nine ten, half an hour to dark. First girl leaves Place Blanche Metro in twenty minutes. Right, the trap is set. Abbess, Colincourt, Blanche, Saint Rustique, three cars there, there, and there. Le Marc, two, there, and there. Oh, see there. Yes, Patron. Anything reported? Nothing at all, Patron. Nothing at all from anyone. Colincourt. Oh, yes, Laporte sent an upper set down. It's all all right now. I'm in position now. Keep in touch. 
Right, Petrol. And good luck. Sticky. Luca. Who's that? Oh. Sergeant Luca there? One moment, sir. Sergeant Luca. Hello. What'd you say? Chief Inspector. Uh, Patron? Yes. 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 We're all set. Mm -hmm. It's just coming up to 9.30. The first girl should be leaving Place Blanche Metro. Check with the patron. What is it, Lapointe? Cochet wants to know if he should stop anyone moving into the area. I thought I made that clear. No one is to be stopped. has just been through the area. She's at the Pigalle Metro now. Blanchard here asking if she should try again. Try again? What the hell are they thinking of? No, she's done her job. Leave it to the others. Right, I'll tell her. That's another one who can go home alive. Hello, Blanche.
she's there, Patron. She'll be all right. Did you see him? Sit down. Thank you. All right, I'll get you a drink. Water, please. Any water after all that? I don't drink. Yes. <coughs> I don't smoke either. Dawes. That's all. Call the lab right away. I want uh, Dr. Gordo up here right away. Yes, Lugar. Did you get him? What? He can't have got away. He must be still inside the area somewhere. Well, no one's leave his post until he's caught. Yes, and you get up here right away, Luca. Right. Damn, damn, damn. I can't think how I let him slip. I teach judo. I should have caught him. You did well. Now, did you know that he was behind you? I heard. Something rattled. I, I heard steps. I turned. He had a knife. So he turned. You saw him? It, it was so quick. It was the knife I saw. Hmm. I was catching him in the forearm hole, and then his hand slipped through mine. It was it a rough hand? No. He had a ring. I felt it. Oh, what kind of a ring? Uh, one with a stone? Or a signet ring, though? No, I, I'd have felt a stone. Yeah. Smooth. Like a wedding ring? Hmm? Could be. Well, it's something. Then I suppose I... I snatched at his coat. Yes. Yes, you've got us a piece of cloth as, as well as a button. Yeah. How long have you been in the police force? Two years. Ah. Did they teach you to kiss young men under lampposts? I saw you. Well, it was my fiance. I thought. <laughs> I thought. Uh, no, 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 no. You thought it might inspire the murderer. Hmm? Well, I was going too far. Now, what, uh, what color was his hair? I couldn't see. It was too dark. But I remember his eyes. They were bright. Mm -hmm. Was his hair short? My hand touched it. No. No, it was long. It fell over his ears. So we know that he had long hair, smooth hands, bright eyes and a wedding ring. Mm, it's not much for a night's work. To God, do? Here we are. What do you think? It's a good class of button. We'll have to see the wholesalers. I couldn't trace a button not from here. Mm. I can tell the cloth by the feel. It's English worsted, imported. Would a tailor recognize it? Recognize it? <laughs> you see that blue strand of fine, long staple merino yeah. running through the grey? Yeah. That is as good as a fingerprint. 
This is the cloth. Yes, that's it. What sort of buttons did you use on this cloth? Uh, plain grey. Oh, oh, except for a suit that we made for a, a Monsieur Monson. Uh, he insisted on grey flecked with blue. Do you have Monsieur Monson's address? Yes, Monsieur. Yes. You sure? Are you watching the entrance? Well, leave the telephone and get there now. The name is Monsin, 228 B Boulevard Saint Germain. It's around the block. Police cars? Yes. We're out in the open now. Transport. No one to leave the building, no one to enter either. Hello, transport. 228 B Boulevard Saint Germain. I'll telephone for a taxi. Excuse me, madame. I'd like to talk to Monsieur Monsin. My husband is much too busy to see anyone this morning. I'm from the Criminal Justice Department, madame. Chief Inspector McRae. Are you going away? Yes. We have a train to catch. Mm. Holiday? No, business. What is your husband's business? He's an architect. Mm -hmm. Could I get my husband to telephone you? I'm sure you'll understand, madame. I have to see him now. Marcel, it's the police. Look, you can't come into my room like this. Oh, why did you let him? I'm not even dressed. I... I suppose you must be Maigret. I know your face from the newspapers. Do you take an interest in crime, monsieur? No, he doesn't. It's much too sordid. Marcel is an artist. Uh, what did you wish to see me about? Last night a crime was committed in Montmartre. We're questioning a lot of people. Now, if you're looking for witnesses, you can count me out. I wasn't there. I was not in Montmartre last night. He was here, working. I was here, working. It was on the plans for a country house. Mm -hmm. I'll show you, if you like. You see? Did you have to work late into the night on that? I started just after dinner and then into the small hours, yes. He went to bed about one o'clock. I heard him from my room. In any case, I wasn't in Montmartre. I never go there. Well, at least that isn't exactly true. I, I do go there sometimes, but that is just to visit my mother. Could I have her address? Yes, certainly. It's the corner of the room, Maestro, number 27. But you haven't been there for weeks, have you, Marcel? And that is all the inspector wanted to know. Now, if you'll excuse us, we do have a train to catch. You really must get ready, Marcel. <laughs> I'd be only too pleased to help you, Inspector, but you see, don't you? Monsieur Monsin, mm -hmm. do you have an English worsted suit, grey, flecked with blue? Uh, no, no, I've never Marcel, had such Marcel, you can't have forgotten. Oh, you mean that suit? Yes, of course. Yes, but I don't have it now. But you were wearing it. Not oh. since last Monday. Oh, didn't I tell you? No, I, I was on a bus and someone with a cigarette burnt a hole in it, in the lapel. So I gave it away. And now, if you'll excuse me, I really must get ready. Couldn't you have got your suit mended, Monsieur Monsieur? I am extremely particular about my clothes. I can't bear to wear anything that has been mended. Mm. When did you give it away? It was Monday about lunchtime. Uh, to a ragged old man. I said, Excuse me, please. Where did you find him? <laughs> really, why do you want to know? It, it was somewhere, uh, somewhere on the left bank. I don't keep a diary about these things, you know. That's a pity, Monsieur Monsin. Because I want to know about that suit. 
So if you come to my office, we could discuss it. I agree to come. Marcel, you are not to allow this. He has no right. All you've done is to throw away a ruined suit. I'm going with him. But I'm going because I choose to go. All right, then. We'll take the afternoon train. Very well, as you wish. I'm ready. Inspector Maigret. Yes. Could I have a word with you alone? Yes, madam. Number one. Wait outside, will you? Yes. Thank you, now. It's about that girl who was attacked last night, isn't it? But Marcel wouldn't do anything like that. He's, he's too gentle. He's not accused so far of doing anything at all. He's delicate and easily upset. You won't be brutal with him, will you? I couldn't bear that. Questions will be asked, madame. That's all you will have to bear. Good morning, madame. You can live for 72 hours without sleep. Come on, we got work to do. Work? What work now? We've got to see every down and out in Paris and find out which one, if any, <laughs> is wearing an expensive English worsted suit, a present from a charitable murderer with one button missing. Oh, is that all? Where's the petrol? With his mother. Uh, the murderers. Well, did your son come to visit you last night, madam? No. He never comes. Well, practically never. You've quarrelled? I've never quarrelled with my son. It's his wife. I, uh, oh. But I... I'm not going into details. You get on with your daughter-in-law. Hmm? I have nothing further to say on that subject. I arranged that marriage, and a lot of thanks I've had. <laughs> Not that I care. Had he known her long before you, uh, b before he married her? They went to school together, just around the corner. So you know this part of Montmartre pretty well. That's not a crime. And if you're here to suggest oh, that he's he a come to see you, madame? I, I, I've, I've told you. Now I can't believe that he's given up seeing his mother altogether. How often? Once a month? He hasn't been here for months, and if you want to know any more, you've got to ask his wife. <laughs> She's in charge. Yes. Has your son ever had any serious illness? No. Nothing. Oh, no, he... He was always perfect. And uh, what was his father? He was a butcher. You saw the shop as you came in. Did he ever think of putting his son into the business? No, he tried. Uh, I soon put a stop to that. <laughs> I, I, I don't wish to discuss my husband. Look, as a little boy, does he look as if he could ever be a butcher? Mm. He can't even stand the sight of red meat. And look, here he is at 12. <laughs> Looks very delicate. Oh. He was an artist from the beginning. Look, he, he made this when he was only seven. Only seven. Yeah. He was always different. Yes, I see. And he always looked so neat in his little suit. She, she would be running around with her hair up and hanging off. And then one day he grew up and left you. He never left me. It was her. When her father died, he was only a chemist. But she got some money and then... Then she took Marcel away. Young married people usually like to be away on their own. He doesn't. He doesn't even want to be married. Not to her. Listen, when she lived here in my house, my kitchen was always full of smoke. Cigarettes, burning saucepans. He had to eat the results of it. So it was because she was a bad cook? It was because... Of, because of everything. Just 
Look what she's done to him. It must be very difficult to look after. Oh, what do you know about it? Not very much so far, but he's waiting for me now in my office. I won't let you keep him. I won't. He shall have every penny I possess. He'll have all my money. I shall get him the very best solicitor in Paris. <laughs> I'll get him out of your hands. Yes, get him a solicitor. Oh, but he won't need one. He's a clever boy, Marcel. Huh. Much too clever for you. Look, I have been here for hours, and nobody's even spoken to me. What do you think you're doing? I'm waiting. Waiting? For what for? The rest of the evidence. I... I suppose I'm not even allowed to eat or drink. But of course, what would you like? Some kind of wine, beer, cognac? Hmm? Lemon squash. Send up some lemon squash. We're in a hurry. It's on its way. Hello, look up. Oh, she is? Uh, no, no, tell her to wait, just a moment. No, 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 tell her to wait. Which one? My wife? My mother? Neither. So you're going to start now. I can't stand violence. There isn't going to be any violence. Have you had anything to eat or drink? There's some lemon squash on its way up. I never touch alcohol. Mm. Cigarette? I don't smoke either. Mm. In fact, the smell of that pipe of yours is extremely distasteful to me. Take him down now, you come. All right, come on. Come on, move. Mademoiselle Jusseron. Good. Let's have you on a straight line. All right. You can stand where you like. Show your hands. Out in front. Look at them all carefully. Don't hurry. the man at the end turn his head to the right? On the end. Will you turn your head to the right? That's him. 
be sure. Yes, it's his eyes. I saw them. All right, come on. All right, gentlemen, thank you. All right, sit down. Well, now that we've got so far, why don't you tell us the truth? The girl was lying. I'm quite sure she wasn't. She passed me the first time. She wasn't sure. You admit that? Petrol, I've got something for you. You want it now? What? Oh, yes, yes. Come on, come on, this way. Come on. <coughs> Thomas. What's the old man's story? Well, he says he thinks his name is Armand. And at about three o'clock this morning, or it might have been four, he was sleeping by one of the bridges over the Seine. He can't remember which one. Anyway, he woke up in time to see a bundle being thrown off the bridge. Some of it landed on the bank, and the other half, that'll be the trousers, dropped in the water. Take the jacket off. Come on, over here. Burn. Just as I said. Dorrance. Call the lab right away. Tell Dr. Gordo I have to know when that spot was burnt. Right, Pepper. Mm -hmm. Pockets. All right, old man. All right. Here. Go buy yourself some food. Mm. Uh, take your rubbish out. Mm. Mm. The point. Mm. Fix him up with an old jacket. Mm. I want to see my wife and my mother. Your wife and your mother. Mm -hmm. I suppose they've made you very unhappy between them, haven't they? Perhaps it wasn't your fault. I suppose you were afraid of your father with his big butcher's knives. So you let your mother turn you into a... Well, your father was a man. He worked for a living. What work have you ever done? I am an architect. Qualified? All right, maybe I didn't pass the exams. And call me a failure, if you like. Failure? You're a pet. A little pet dog kept clean and neat and pretty by these two women. Allowed to play at architects because he doesn't make a mess. But it's difficult for a pet to have two owners. They fight over you. They fight over your food, everything. I won't listen. I want to go. So you began to nurse a dream of hitting back at women. Any women. A man with a knife. A hero. But if I slapped your face, you'd burst into tears. You're perfectly right, you know. I'd never commit murder. I am far too much of a coward. Perhaps you never meant to kill anyone. Perhaps you only dreamt about it. Carried the knife about as a game. I don't admit to anything. And then one night in a dark street, the opportunity came. Isn't that how it happened? Nothing happened. Your mind snapped shut. My mind happens to be particularly clear. I, I don't know exactly how I'm going to make you understand this, but I am an artist. I can organize rhythms, shapes. And actions? I am a bit of a man of action at times, yes. <laughs> oh, but not in the way that you think. You are not dealing with a smash-and-grab man, you know. No, I realize you're different. I, I am so different that I have decided not to go on with this conversation. You can't make me talk. Sit down! Did you use your mother as an excuse to visit Montmartre? I want to see my mother. I want to tell her that I'm innocent. Tell her what you like, but you're going to be charged with murder. <laughs> It'd be much easier for you if you confess now. Your trial, for instance, would be shorter, less distressing for you. I don't even believe they'll send you to prison. 
will be regarded as a psychiatric case, something unique. They'll put you in books. Experts will come and visit you. I know what you're trying to do. You think I'm mad, don't you? Well, allow me to tell you that my mind happens to be somewhat better than normal, and I admit to nothing. Come in. Dr. Gordeau says there's no doubt about it. That burn isn't more than 20 hours old. You can have him, Dolores. What are you going to do to me? If you locked up. But you can't do that. I'm innocent, I tell Take you. Take him away. I'm innocent. I, I, I want to tell him about my wife and my mother. He can do that. <laughs> oh, what a case. Do you think he'll ever confess? What now? Well, when you catch up on sleep, you go in, Miss Two Nights. Two? <laughs> it's been about five months. I'm glad he's over. Yeah. Good night, Pat. Good night, you guys. You're on time. Yes, your district again. <laughs> if this is some sort of a trick, Inspector, I really don't quite see the point. The point is Janine Laurent is 18. She came from Saint Valery en Co six weeks ago. On the way home for her first dance in Paris, she stabbed in the back seven times. <laughs> you really can't blame me for this one as well, can you? Oh, Inspector? take him on my side. What are you going to do with me? You can't keep me here, you know. I'm innocent. And this proves it. Your murderer is still at large. This is his way of telling you. But surely you must see that. I'm innocent, I tell you. Take him away. Innocent! Well, what now? Do we start all over again? No. We go on from where we were. You still think Marseille is the Montmartre killer? Yes. So whoever killed that girl tonight was trying to establish his innocence. Yeah. Love and hate. Which is the stronger, Luca? That's a burning question. La Pointe. Patron? Madame Orsain, the mother. She can visit her son tonight. Tonight, Patron? Yes, bring her now. Luca. Get the wife over here. If you just wait in here, please, madame. Well, where is my son? Where is he? I'll see if Inspector Maigret will see you yet. Please sit down. I'm waiting in here, madame. I thought I was to see my husband. But of course. If you'll just wait, please. Each other to pieces yet. They haven't even spoken yet. There's no other possible explanation. One of those two women must have killed that girl. Which is the stronger? Their love for Marcel or their hatred for each other?
Here are petrol, first edition. And I pulled them off the press myself. Six Montmartre killing. That's it. Right. Take them in. Tell the last one copy each. I brought you the papers. Patron. You can bring him in now. Yes, Patron. Terence. Yes, Patron. Bring in the two women. This is it. And if it doesn't work? We've lost all along the line. I'll never convict him after last night's murder. Capat! Uh, all set. Got a surprise for you. Why have I been kept waiting? Dear boy, oh, how ill you look. I can't stand this any longer. I can't a word, Marcel. Still taking orders from the women? What's happened to the murdering hero? You can't talk to him like that. He's innocent. Innocent? That's a big word here. If he'd confessed yesterday, a girl called Janine Laurent would be alive this morning. Lying warm in a bed, but she's not. Well, that proves he's innocent. You can't keep him here. You've got the wrong man. Wrong man. He killed five women. Because for years he wanted to murder you. The mother wouldn't let him grow up into a man. And you, the wife, the second owner of this little slave. You two women have fought like wolves, and now one of you has murdered to protect your property. Murder is your subject. It is not mine. It is a subject which appeals and fascinates the civilized races. How far did the fascination carry you? It wouldn't carry her very far. She wouldn't kill for you, my son. She wouldn't do anything for you. Say that you love me, Marcel. I don't care who's listening. Just say that you love me. I am listening. And I know a lie when I hear one. Marcel, you love me. Your mother. Oh, say it, Marcel. Say it, say it. Yes, mother. I love you. Oh, I love you. Much more than she could ever understand. There, there. That's what you wanted to hear, wasn't it? I killed that girl last night. Well, now you, you can take me away. When did you kill her? I can come down from my rooms without being seen. I, I come down through the butcher's shop. What did you do with the knife? I cleaned it and put it back. What did you think of when you saw that girl? I thought of Marcel. Did you notice what dress she was wearing? It was a cheap, shiny dress, and she was just coming home from a dance. What colour was it? I didn't see. It was a blue dress. I'm right. Do you understand, Marcel? Yes. I'm not insane. Only in your own way. Kiss me, Marcel. for some sleep. Ooh. 24 hours of it. Sleep. Well, you got two murders. And one girl killed who should be alive this morning. 